Hello everybody, it is I, Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. Um, just uh, coming to you out of uh, Boise, Idaho here. As you can see, we are still working on the Nightmare, oh I'm sorry, uh, Toyota 1.8 liter. It's a, uh, uh, actually what it is, is it's a 2000 Toyota Corolla and uh, it's got a 1.8 liter engine in it. And it came to me, uh, the customer actually wanted to do, uh, originally was looking into doing a complete engine rebuild, but this engine only has 160,000 miles on it, and this is a known three, 400,000 mile engine, so, and honestly, I had a hard time pricing a rebuild, because my machine shop guys and a few other guys that I work with on that type of work said, Matt, I don't think I've ever done one of those. I've never seen one that needed one. So, but I'll tell you what what this engine does need, and it's actually quite brilliant once you get down to the engineering of it. So, um, when it came to me, it had complete loss of power. When you started it up, it sounded like a diesel or, or like a rock grinder. Um, you know, it was uh, running extremely rough and uh, would not pass emissions as well. And if you look at my uh, diagnosis on this, you can see where I pulled some emission codes and misfire codes and everything else. Well, um, the other part of the diagnosis was uh, a visual inspection of the timing chain and timing components due to the data that, that we pulled from the beginning. And sure enough, once I had pulled uh, the timing cover off, I found an extremely loose timing chain. Now at that point, this vehicle has, and uh, actually this engine, and, and most Toyota engines nowadays, 95 and newer, have what's called a bucket lifter. Now, this is a lifter that makes contact with the camshaft, with the lobes on the camshaft, and this is what pushes your valves up and down or open and close, okay? So, and the way that you measure one of these is you use what's called a feeler gauge, and they have different sizes all throughout this feeler gauge, stuff that the human eye can't see. The one I'm currently looking at right now is ten thousandths of an inch feeler gauge and so what happens is these uh not the bucket lifters it's actually the valve seat and the head itself that, that gets worn down and i made an illustration that i'll show you too but what uh or you know that i'll bring to you and uh so what you do here is and a lot of times you can look underneath the hood on these toyotas and you find the specifications for you know, whatever side you're looking at, intake or exhaust. So we're going to look at the intake, and you're looking at ten thousandths of an inch. Ten thousandths of an inch is the most amount of clearance that you want, and the least amount of clearance that you want is going to be six thousandths of an inch. Okay, so we're going to pull our feeler gauge out. I'm going to pull out six thousandths of an inch here. There's seven. I mean, six is right there. And we're going to see. And we're going to do this here on our exhaust. And even though the timing chain is off of it, number one is at TDC, which means the exhaust is closed. You can see that it's up. And we're going to stick our feeler gauge down in there. Now you can see that six thousandths of an inch fits not too tight but not too loose so that means that these two let's check our other one here this one's good as well so what does this mean this means that that these two valves on the exhaust side according to measurement and specification are completely shut and in order to check and measure that you have to go through each one now the way they wear and tear if this valve was not shut when it's supposed to be, I would not be able to fit six thousandths of an inch in there. Um, if I go to five thousandths of an inch, I still may not be able to fit it in there, which then tells me that these valves have worn out so much that, uh, that they are open at all times, no matter what position the uh, camshaft is in. And so in order to, to check this, you do have to take uh, the front... Uh, front half of the engine off all of your accessories and components and then from there uh, you also need to take off your timing cover and just turn it by hand and 
and you know stick your your feeler gauge in there and then figure out before you take your timing components completely off and your camshafts out figure out which ones you need and mark them and i'll show you uh, exactly how i did that so i'm going to pause it here and i'll take you to the workbench okay so after watching that first five minutes you're probably wondering to yourself well how does this wear out how does this work so I drew an illustration here to try to show you the best way. So right here, we have our camshaft, right? And this is, this is your camshaft. We'll look at the back of it right here. So you see your camshaft, and you see those little ears protruding out. Those are going to be your lobes. Okay, and actually, here, here's the front. This is the intake side with the variable valve timing gear in it, on it. That's brand new. I installed that. Um, so here's your camshaft, okay? And now your camshaft is going to be turning this way, uh, clockwise, as you see. And you have a lifter bucket, which here is what one of the buckets look like again. Okay. So this goes once, once the elbow of the camshaft there, of that lobe, makes contact with the top of this lifter bucket. It then pushes it down, up and down like that. And inside of there is where the valve stem sits with the spring, and it pushes it up and down, up and down, up and down. Now remember that spring is inside of there, and it's constantly pushing up. Okay, so you have your camshaft turning. And then right here is where if your camshaft is in the correct position with the elbow up and the heel here, right here is where your clearance is going to be. And that's where you're going to stick your feeler gauge in. To feel the clearance and if the clearance is correct well then that's going to tell you that this lifter bucket is all the way up because remember the lifter bucket moves up and down up and down that's going to tell you that the lifter bucket is all the way up the spring is compressed all the way and the valve the head of the valve is completely shut and flushed with the cylinder head so therefore if down here is your cylinder where your combustion is happening with the elbow completely up on the camshaft, 10 thousandths clearance in between your lifter bucket and your camshaft, meaning it's completely up and closed, compressed with the spring. Now you have your combustion take place. That is now where your compression hits. Boom! And you get your compression, okay? Then what happens is this turns, okay? And your elbow now makes contact with your lifter bucket pushing it down, opening it up, and there you have it, okay? And then all of your exhaust and everything goes out, okay? Now you have your cylinder head and you have a valve seat right here, okay? Valve seat where? On your valve head. This wears over time. And if you have a valve here and a spring that no matter what is constantly pressing up until the head is flush and closed, then what happens eventually is this wears out, the valve begins to move upwards along with the bucket, and now instead of there being 10 thousandths of an inch clearance in between there, there is now no clearance, so no matter what position your camshaft is in, your lifter and your, bu your lifter bucket, your valve and everything is always open. When it comes down around, it may open up completely like it's supposed to, but when it comes time to close again, it may come back to close, but because it's wore out here and no adjustments have been made for the lifter buckets, it's now, let's say, five thousandths of an inch open. And, well, a, a combustion, you know, that's, that's like that, five thousandths of an inch of a crack, that's going to let all your compression out. That's where you're going to lose your power. So... You go to the drawing board and you use different tools like your feeler gauge. And like on some of these, I couldn't even get five thousandths of an inch in there, meaning they're extremely tight. They were, you know, open. They were up all the way. Unfortunately, there was, you know, ten thousandths or twenty thousandths of an inch wear on the on the uh, valve seat. And so therefore, what I had to do was go through and I had to get measurements. Now you use a C-shaped micrometer and believe it or not these actually never wear out these are hardened steel again where the wear and tear happens is on the valve seat 
spring constantly pressing pressing up to the point to where it doesn't matter what position your camshaft is in this is constantly open even if it's five five thousandths of an inch even if it's so minute the human eye can't see it it's still open and you're still losing compression so what you do is you have to mic each one of these okay at that point you do have to mic each one of these and you get your measurement all right and you and you write your measurement down and then and then you look at your specifications and uh you have to order each one of these separate according to your math and your specifications now how to do the math is probably going to be a good 30 minute video so if any of you really really want me to show you uh how we did the math on this and how we came up with this uh just shoot me a message and i'll go ahead and take the time to make a video with that now what happened was let's see we had two four six eight ten twelve fourteen we had 16 valves that we had to measure and move around and the downside to this job is because of the way this this is set up and like i said this is a brilliant setup because if you know how to do this and if you have your toyota serviced accordingly and get the valves adjusted this engine will last you you know three four hundred thousand miles any toyota engine honestly will but unfortunately because of the way it's set up see these are my old timing gears my old chain you can't check your work there is no way possible to double check your math or to double your check your work that i know of other than putting the timing back on putting the camshafts back in putting it about 80 percent back together so that way which includes putting the timing cover back on because the tensioner for the timing setup is part of the cover so you have to put all that back together and put all that back on so that way you can use your wrench and turn your engine over by hand and go back through and make sure that on each and every one of these lobes that they are closed when you're done and so what i have is i have one right here that uh, the mat and it's not that i did the math wrong it's just the parameter that i pulled for it i kind of went towards the middle instead of the lower end so i ended up having to go back and buying another bucket lifter that was on the lower end of the parameter and it's actually the same for this side as well this one is still too tight and so i went ahead and had to order uh another bucket lifter that was still within the parameters that i chose it just i just should have really went for the lower parameters like right here if you look my parameter was 519 to 509 and I ended up picking like, I think a 515 uh, for that for that one. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at my paperwork right now while I'm trying to get your focus back. And yeah, I had picked a 515 and uh, the 515 wasn't enough. So I decided to take it down six, uh, six thousandths to a 509. And so I ordered that one there. And then same with this one. This one was way too tight and I had a parameter of 529 and 519 and I think I ordered a yep you can see right there well, well right here you can see on the 519 I ordered a 516 that was still way too tight I could not get five thousandths of an inch inside of there so I took it down another five thousandths of an inch basically or um let's see 16 13 12 11 yeah so you can see my brain's fried from all this math so I took it down from 516 to 509 and then on this one I took down from uh, 524 to 519. So this is the one that I took down to 5 thousandths of an inch actually. And really that's just a number that I'm using because these go in increments of two. So um, yeah, I didn't take it down a full 5 thousandths or I even went over a little bit. So unfortunately, um, there's nobody around here from what I understand that's not in a shop or a dealership that really knows how to do this work. So they don't buy, they don't keep these bucket lifters anywhere in town that I can find them. I've been having to order them from Portland. So that's what's been adding to the time on this job. But now that we got our bucket lifters, we're going to get back to recleaning our timing cover off again and get everything installed. Thank you everybody for, uh, sticking with me through this video. I appreciate everybody's support. This is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood automotive technician, signing off.